was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Beat up for the taste of the pain. Uh, sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm Welcome back. It is the Indie Mayhem Show, the show where we uh, share our passion for the independent pro wrestling that is out there. The raw alternative, if you will. We'll talk about that actually a little bit later in the show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter uh, production over here at SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, doing a lot of stuff here in the area of Pittsburgh with uh, Renegade Wrestling Alliance with International Wrestling Cartel, amongst others. And a lot of cool stuff going over on uh, PittsburghWrestling.com if you're interested in see, uh, checking any of that stuff out. Uh, with me is my compatriot from San Antonio, Texas. He's a commentator for NWA Inspire Pro, recently uh, featured on a Raw Alternative. I'm trying to make sure that L gets in there. He's aiming at Amon too, please. How are you doing, sir? Yes, he has the, the raw alternative, which raw I, I, alternative. doesn't roll off the tongue as well. Um, but yeah, I'm sure we'll be talking about that later on in the show and, and, and some yeah. more, of, uh, some more uh, of that kind of talk. Actually, it's working with me pretty well because I was introduced to the term called rawful yoga, I think it is. Um, hmm. I, I think I'm going to be learning more about it through some some coincidence here. So, <laughs> anyways, this is your indie mayhem show where we don't talk about yoga. That's a different podcast entirely uh, that we don't do here. Uh, <laughs> and I do do for some other clients uh, in, in a way. Anyways, anyways, uh, <laughs> GGP yoga, bro. Um, but this is the Andy Mayhem Show. Uh, please check out our intro if you dig it from Basic Sickness, uh, another Pittsburgh original, uh, basicsickness.com. Uh, I understand he, uh, shout out to him, I understand he just rocked it at a, a CD release party for somebody uh, in town here uh, over the weekend. Please also check out this and other shows we have going on at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, and you can drop us a line at GoodTimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, or the phone number at 412-206-WMS0. You can also tweet us at Mayhem Show or find the Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, homes on uh, Google Plus or Facebook, and you can also join us here live around about 11 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Central Time, or so, as the case may be. Um, and uh, that's at live.sorgatronmedia.com or live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. We got a live chat going on there as we do this, and you can become a part of it. Uh, tonight we got a guest uh, from uh, Amon's uh, world down there, down south there. Uh, what do we got this week, sir? Definitely, it was uh, it was my week to bring on a guest, and and this is a guest that I've actually wanted to have on for a good period of time uh, because uh, I've gotten the uh, privilege and the opportunity to see this person make their way up uh, in the Texas independent wrestling scene and even beyond that, uh, doing some really amazing things. And it's a pleasure to have him on the show, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Barrett Brown. Barrett, how are you doing this evening? Doing very well, guys. How are y'all doing tonight? Fantastic. Uh, pleasure to have you on. Like like I mentioned. Um, I guess the first question that we can ask, and, and it's uh, the icebreaker of sorts when it comes to these kind of interviews, uh, uh, but uh, we all got into you know, professional wrestling in some way or another. Uh, uh, so I'd like to know, what's uh, your first ever memory of professional wrestling? My first ever memory of pro wrestling, uh, man, they're actually breaking in. It was when I was actually 14 years old. Uh, my mom went to school with a guy that actually was a wrestler down here in seven points where I live. So, uh, I kind of started going to shows, uh, checking those out, kind of put a bug in his ear, kind of, you know, bugged him for a while about getting into the business and everything. And he, uh, you know, he really wasn't up for training a 14 year old at the time, but, uh, eventually I, uh, I kind of bugged him enough to where finally, you know, he was like, whatever, I'll give this kid a shot. And, uh, you know, I got my, butt kicked for about a good month and finally he was like you know hey you know he's not he's not leaving so you know i think he must want it a little bit so my uh my first memory would have to be just kind of as a 14 year old kid just kind of taking my first bumps in the ring and just getting beat up for a while definitely um uh was it based off of i mean your intrigue to kind of sort of do that stuff i mean you mentioned you know being at shows and stuff like that uh did you watch it you know on tv as a kid uh did you have any sort of uh, favorites in in, the, in that realm Oh, all the time, yeah. I mean, uh, my, my parents loved it, so, you know, they, they kind of introduced me to the old school, you know, WCW and everything. Uh, my favorite, you know, whenever I was like six or seven years old was always Goldberg. Mm -hmm. You know, the uh, old school Goldberg, I loved him. And then uh, then I would finally uh, be introduced to Shawn Michaels, and then he was always another favorite of mine. So it's always been something that I, I had always wanted to do and really something that I never thought that I'd be able to get into. And just looking back on it now, it's really crazy to think about that. 
you know, 20 years old and I've already done all these things that I never really thought that I would accomplish. Awesome. Definitely. And you mentioned, um, you know, your family sort of being around wrestling. Uh, and I think one of the cool things about you, you particularly, is um, you have a very supportive family when it comes uh, uh, to your wrestling career. Uh, and we've talked to people on the show, and, and usually we either get the response of, you know, my family really loved this, or, um, you know, they, they aren't big fans of me doing this. But your family not only, I think, is, you know, fans of you, but they really seem to support you in, in your craft and, and, and in uh, you growing in the business. What's, what's that been like, sort of having them uh, by your side through the whole, uh, through the whole process? Uh, I can honestly say that I would not be where I am without them. Um, because it was, it was a fear of mine whenever I decided that I actually wanted to become a professional wrestler. Uh, you know, I'd heard the horror stories about guys that, you know, wanted to do this and their parents were, you know, always against it. They didn't want them to do it. They didn't want them to, you know, hurt themselves and all this. But whenever they realized that, you know, yes, I wanted to do this, that I had a passion for it. They sat me down and basically said, if you want this, if this is what you want, then we will help you, you know, achieve your dream. And ever since that conversation, anything that I've needed, anything that I've really just needed to further my career, they have always had a hand in helping me, whether it be travel, whether it be hotel or, you know, just anything. They have always been there and it's been like that ever since day one. So, yeah, I mean, I couldn't be more blessed, honestly. Awesome. Uh, going into sort of your training, like uh, where, where specifically did you did you get your training from, and, and what was what was it like, sort of you know, the bumps and bruises of, of actually training and, and becoming a professional wrestler? Right. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I, I kind of started in my hometown, uh, fourteen at the time, and uh, it, it was just as a fourteen year old kid, you know, my body was still kind of growing and everything, and it it was painful, man. It was. It was when I took my first bump, it, like the thought crossed my mind. I was like, do I want to do this to myself, you know, for a living? Like, do I want to, you know, do I want to constantly do this to myself? But, you know, I was like, you know, this is just something that I'm going to have to get through. And just as I grew with the business, uh, eventually when I graduated from the school here in Seven Points, you know, I would travel with my trainer that was there, Cody Cunningham. But after I graduated from his school, I went to uh, Killerton Brooks and watched the Hatchie. And, uh, you know, he put me through some rigorous training there. And then uh, I eventually went to Johnny Mantell as well and got a lot of really in-depth old school professional wrestling training. So it's, it's just that hard hitting old school style that I think is almost becoming like a lost art nowadays. So mm -hmm. I was really fortunate to get to travel around and get to, you know, pick the minds of all these guys and learn from some of the best. So yeah, like I said, totally blessed to have, met all these guys and trained under some of these names. Definitely. And for anyone that's ever gotten the chance to see you wrestle, I think that, I think that's really a testament sort of the fact that you have sort of that traditional um, Southern style. You can see a lot in your work, but also you're uh, very much a modern, you know, your, your high flying high risk sort of stuff that people can sort of, you know, latch onto and, and, and really enjoy. Um, and you mentioned, I mean, you're only 20 years old, but uh, you've gotten the opportunity to wrestle some, you know, phenomenal people, you know, in professional wrestling. Um, are there any people that sort of stick out to you as far as uh, names that you've gotten to wrestle that you really enjoyed? Absolutely. Um, I mean, whenever I turned 18 was whenever everything really started to kind of open up for me. And around that time, um, actually Tim Storm, who I've wrestled with numerous times, and he's like my wrestling, my wrestling godfather. I mean, anyone, you know, who's anyone knows that Tim Storm is the man, yeah. uh, in, in, in his wrestling, but uh, he introduced me to a traditional championship wrestling. And when I went up there, um, you know, it was just a matter of me putting a bug in the promoter's ear. And I got on that show, and they got national television. And eventually, uh, the if I had to name one name that I got to wrestle uh, that I learned the most from, uh, I actually got to step in the ring in Fort Smith, Arkansas, against Cowboy Bob Orton. Very and nice. that that was just man i i got about three years of experience in about 12 minutes it was un, it was unbelievable that's really cool and and that's the thing i think it's for someone your age getting to wrestle a lot of big names that you've seen on tv you know and 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 recognizable names it, it's got to be really sort of you know a, amazing learning experience especially you know being so young 
It is, you know, I mean, it's, it's humbling to say the least. Uh, cause I remember getting the email from the promoter. He was like, Hey, well, I've got a really big idea for you. And, you know, I, I didn't think much of it because, you know, I was only 18. I was like, okay, well, whatever you want. He said, well, I want to put you against Cowboy Bob Orton. And like, I, I just kind of froze. I, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> so like, I, I literally spent like the, the next two months just preparing for that. And yeah, it's just, it was unreal. Awesome. Definitely. Uh, and you've gotten the chance to, I mean, work for a lot of really good people too. Uh, uh, I know recently uh, you got the chance to even participate in a, uh, in a seminar for uh, ring of honor wrestling. Um, what's it been like to sort of, you know, get in front of people, you know, on a bigger stage, even outside of Texas and, and some of the top independent groups uh, and sort of, put yourself out there like that. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's something that I knew I would have to do eventually. Um, and I figured, you know, the sooner the better, uh, the sooner that I could get that experience and grow with that, uh, the better. So I've been to four of those so far. And I mean, got to meet guys like, you know, Adam Cole, Delirious, Tommaso Ciampa, all these guys. Uh, and there was actually one memory, uh, it was a few months back. They had a New Japan crossover mm-hmm. seminar, and they had got I mean, Jushin Liger was there, Shinsuke Nakamura was there, just all these guys, and just, you know, just sitting there watching us wrestle in front of them. And it was it was like I was in heaven. It was like a dream come true. Yeah, I mean, it's, like I said, it was something that I realistically never expected that would happen for me. But, yeah, it was unreal, man. It was just out of this world to me. Definitely. I mean, I mean, I can only imagine. Um, looking forward now sort of into uh, uh, 2015, uh, uh, everyone kind of has their, uh, their goals in mind of, of what they want to do and accomplish. Um, uh, do you have anything sort of set for you? Uh, maybe, you know, places uh, you want to wrestle or opponents you want to face? Um, uh, are there any specific things you have in mind that you, you are looking to achieve uh, in the coming year? Man, basically branch out. Uh, I mean, ever since my first year, Texas, uh, around my area, around Dallas, had a lot of places to wrestle, but a lot of those places ended up getting shut down. Mm. So uh, ever since then, you know, I've been traveling out of state more. So now my goal for this year is basically to, you know, be more vocal on social media, be be more vocal everywhere, make sure my name gets out there, and basically branch out farther and just, you know, spread the word. That's my main goal for this year. And then uh, whatever happens this year, capitalize on it. And hopefully my my main goal is potentially Ring of Honor. That, that's kind of what I'm shooting for right now. But I just want I want my name out there. You know, that's my main goal. Definitely. And, and I, every time I see your stuff, you're, you're, def, you, uh, you're always in different places. I, know, I think this past weekend you went to uh, – you did a show in California, um, you know, so are you, you're definitely one that is definitely, you know, branching outside of Texas and, and, you know, getting your name out there, which is, which is really cool to see. Um, I guess the, the last question we ask, and it's, it's sort of our, our big question here on the show. It's, you know, obviously the, this is a show about, you know, independent wrestling and, and sort of all the uh, multifacets of it. Uh, and uh, you can feel free to take this question, you know, in any direction that you would like, but uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, what, in your opinion, is the best thing about independent wrestling and the worst thing about independent wrestling? Oh, that's good. Um, well, I think the best thing to me about independent wrestling is that since I started so young, I kind of got to grow up in the business. You know, uh, mm-hmm. I kind of came to came of age in this business. And I think that with that, I've really matured being around a lot of the professionals that I've been around, uh, especially in the last couple of years. Um and on top of that, I mean, I've gotten to live my, my lifelong dream. And I'm only 20 years old, and it can only get better from here. So the best thing to me about indie, indie wrestling is that it's really shown me who I am as a person, and I've gotten to live my dream. And the worst thing about indie wrestling, uh, I think the, the worst thing to me is the amount of travel it actually takes an independent wrestler to get their name out there. Mm-hmm. Um which I've always been taught that you've got to spend money to make money. And that's very true in the, in the indie wrestling business to me. So I think that if I had one thing to say negatively, it's just that you have to travel a lot to make a name for yourself in this business. 
Absolutely. Definitely. Uh, I can definitely see that. Um, well, thank you so much, Mayor, for joining us on this show. It was, a, it was a pleasure finally getting to talk to you. Um, if you are, you know, if anybody can check you out at any upcoming events or if you have, you know, social media that you, uh, that people can follow you on, uh, feel free to, uh, feel free to plug away. Absolutely. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Barrett Brown, B-A-R-R-E-T-T. And then you can find me on Twitter at TCO underscore Barrett B, all one word. Awesome, definitely. And uh, if you are ever in an area where Bear Brown is resting, I highly encourage you to uh, go check him out uh, because you will definitely uh, have a have an amazing time uh, watching this uh, uh, guy do what he does. Uh, so once again, thank <laughs> so once again, thank you, Barrett. And uh, I believe me and Sora are going to dive into uh, some of the stuff happening uh, in the independent wrestling world. Maybe some uh, some of this raw alternative stuff. That's right, Eamon. Uh, Raw Alternative. We talked about a little bit of this on the Wrestling Mayhem show, but of course, not everybody uh, really kind of digs into the indie indies like we do. Um, uh, although that's that's changing, I think, in a lot of cases. But the Raw Alternative, I, I was one of those that had uh, Raw on the TV, and I pulled out the iPad. I got the YouTube stream going for the Raw Alternative. And I get to experience both as much as I can. Unfortunately, I was really into Raw. They did really good this week, I thought, uh, for, for what they deliver. Obviously, something completely different. Um, but I know you got hit. Well, that, I know you were more personally involved in this. Um, yes, and, and, and Spire Pro had the, had the privilege of getting to be one of the promotions uh, participating in this event, which was a huge honor mm -hmm. um, uh, because we were with some really, really well known independent groups. Um, uh, in that lineup, guys like AIW, guys like you know AAW out of Chicago, um, uh, Ear Species Wrestling, like the, mm -hmm. to be in the same you know sort of realm with those guys was was really cool, um, and, a, and a really big honor. Uh, yeah, and I thought it was pretty tremendous too. And I, and and uh, oh, the video is private. They're smart on that. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was great to pull it up, and, and you saw a lot of names. Um, of course, you represented on there. Uh, uh, great with the commentary, and it was great kind of comparing, too. Um, for me, even as a guy that does wrestling production, it was great to have a back-to-back, -back, like, how are other people handling production, right? right? And see, Because there was a lot of different, like, sort uh, of... I, I, a lot of it was all over the map, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. Commentary at different levels, if there's commentary at all. The things they did with the cameras that were both hit and miss, you know, depending on who it was. Um, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you saw, you know, comparatively, how how does everybody look next to each other on on, on the same level? Because I don't know if they they even uh, broadcast this thing at HD or anything like that. Um, I, yeah, I think I, I pretty like it depended on the group. I think uh, some of them have like more HD stuff, and others are kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, was the stream in HD? I I'm, I'm not I, sure. I think it was. It was. From what I know. Okay. Because uh, like we don't broadcast this in HD, we're 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 using I think something very similar to them using the YouTube live mechanism, um, right? And just to make sure, because I I don't feel like we get you know we're a bunch of talking heads, it doesn't make mm -hmm. sense for us to push HD. Uh, so we we actually just top it out for 480p, and and everybody seems happy with it. Everybody can follow along. I don't have any bandwidth problems because we're also bringing like your own Skype or the Hangout and everything. Um, but that's a decision yeah. we make. But we have a lot. Also, going you on. don't. Also, you don't deserve to see our faces in HD. You you, you want these <laughs> present? Well, present let's be honest. Faces. I'm the only one that's in HD. <laughs> <laughs> way, the way everybody comes across. But anyways, most of you guys are not you anyways. Um, but no, I thought it was fantastic. Uh, that, and I hope there's going to be more of these. I don't know if you have any insider on that. Uh, uh, there, there is definitely talks of doing another good, one. Good, good. Uh, I think, I definitely think... not monthly or anything like I think someone suggested, but mm -hmm. quarterly is definitely being thrown around. This, this so. feels like the next step of National Pro Wrestling Day. Mm -hmm. This feels like, because that, that was great. It was a great showcase. It turned into something different, I felt, the next year. Um, and that's it was because next the the year after was more of a wrestling is sort of based thing. Yeah, sort yeah. Of like, it, it was kind of like a precursor to the just sort of like further the Jakarta yeah. story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they they kind of let some of us come in <laughs> the year the first year. And for right. whatever, I'm sure that was a nightmare to deal with, though. I, oh I, yeah, I, I'm I mean, sure that was a nightmare to deal with. Uh, I know some people were like, I thought it was gonna. I think some people who like didn't look too much into the description was like, I thought it was gonna be a live event of matches uh, for like different companies, like like, like National Pro Wrestling Day. You, you and, like, that would have been, yeah. been so difficult to execute. <laughs> oh, dude, doing that on a Monday night and then bringing everybody to represent, you know, from everywhere across the country would have been ridiculous. 
Um, just it's just a logistical nightmare, and you know we how many times do we hear about how people are on the indies? You know, between the promoters that think they're hot stuff, between the wrestlers that think they're hot stuff, and whatever town they came from, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, we went in there, and nobody knew what IWC was. Nobody knew what IWC was. They're making jokes as the international wrestling com- internet wrestling community, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, you know, it, it, it kind of showed that, you know, and uh, I thought it was a wake up call or it should have been a wake up call uh, for, for those involved. You know, I, I just came along to help with support and DVD and stuff, you know. Right. Um, but uh, other than that. Um, I think something I think it was a good feel around right, yeah, as far as, it, yeah. as that kind of concept of community and, mm-hmm. and of, you know, companies maybe not working together even, but like just being on the same platform and, and from, and I would say working together because I had the other, other companies were promoting Inspire Pro and everyone else being like, Hey, check exactly. out these guys, follow these guys, you know, and, and like that's, that's really cool. Well, we, we, and, and then there's that cross pollination. Cause now, now there was, you know, with the, let's say a national pro wrestling day, anybody into IWC, maybe go went and check this out. And now they know what your car is, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that happens with you guys. Uh, we, we got into the wormhole of, does this really affect anything? Are the people watching Raw really tired of it going to go see this? No, that's not who it's for. Yeah, I mean, and it's not the point. There's yeah, no yeah. illusions of grandeur of overtaking Monday Night Raw with this thing. But no, it's, no, a, no. it's riding the wave and picking up some of the minnows along the way. And that's, not a, that's not a demeaning way to say that uh, in my intention. Um, but, it, but it is. I think, like, I think the biggest thing, because I, 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 you know, I follow the hashtag and stuff like that, and I've seen people... I, there's a, a, it's a, you would think it would be a, a w- widely positive thing, but I've seen people be like, uh, you know, I, I would rather, you know, fucking drink bleach than watch Raw and turn it or whatever. And it's like, really? Oh, wow. it's, like, it's, it's just free wrestling. Like, you're, and you're well, not forced to watch it. Like, I mean, it, it well, and then how many of those are from promotions that weren't, weren't allowed to be involved? Yeah. Uh, or, or maybe, because uh, there are many. I mean, I still remember back, you know, when I still attended IWC and Samoa Joe was there. Yeah. And a guy behind me saying, man, Samoa Joe must not be doing good if he's here. I was like, and that's when he was hot in TNA. Right. That's when he was coming up, doing those matches with the Kurt Angle, doing crazy stuff there. Um, and that's the, that's what people think of this stuff as it's like, well, this guy's not good enough to be on WWE. It's like, no, it's a, it's a guys that are trying to get there and you never know who's going to be the next CM Punk. It, it, and it takes a, a bit in a certain mindset to be able to reach those people. And those people yeah, are, it's like, and it's like you me. mentioned, it, it, the purpose of the whole thing was not to overtake raw or to people. And we joke about it, but I don't think raw was like this raw alternative thing. Let's step our game up. No. And, um, and even I, I I, I think uh, it was the AIW promoter put it really good uh, as far as what the what we were looking to get out of this, which was if one new person sees AIW and likes it and buys a DVD or comes to a show even or whatever, then it's a success. Yeah, it's worth it. It didn't cost anybody to do this. YouTube Live no. is free. Uh, you know, the smart marks behind this, they have all the footage in house. So yeah. it, it's really, honestly, all technically all it is, I can, I could do the same thing here with IWC and RWA footage, you know? Yeah. And, not to, not, not, and not to, yeah. I mean, dude, I'll go too but, far. But, but that's what I'm saying. It, it, it's an easy thing. It's using the tools. They're smart to put the pieces together, hashtag this, promote this, involve these people, use YouTube live, free, 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 free tools or already have access to that is smart. Just like I, I'm very, really mm-hmm. impressed with some new promoters coming out now that are you they're hashtagging everything and or have been and, and and really using I mean there is a lot of you know maybe you should put money in and advertise this this and then everything but there's also let's use the tools that are there and I think the the smart people are going to be doing that and they're going to see a lot more out of this they're going to see a yeah. community rise up from these internet fans. You know, um, I mean, I, I, there are some people that really get riding that internet wave, and and those people rise to success. I was happy. Th- that's one of the things I was really happy with the match that we provided specifically was uh, to get to expose people to Andy Dalton, mm-hmm. who has been wrestling. I mean, he wrestles outside of Texas, but he hasn't. He isn't as recognizable of a name. Oh, um, absolutely not. But he, he he's one of the guys that like he has a Twitter and he's starting to understand like how to use it and how to build his brand and and get people interested in his stuff and uh i had a lot of people tweeting saying i really enjoyed his work 
and and that's that's a success for us. That that that's really what this whole thing is all about. The, that's the one thing I really liked with the whole lineup that people provided was usually it was some sort of an independent wrestling name uh, versus somebody that probably some people have not heard of. And Andy Dalton, again, no slight to Andy Dalton, but when you first set eyes on him, he doesn't look like he's going to be an impressive wrestler. No, no, no. Like, like, like physically, he doesn't look. I mean, he's no John Cena, you know. But a lot of these guys aren't. Um, and, and I mean, that who, was and of, so is Kevin Steen. So Kevin Steen suffers from the same yeah. thing, but everybody knows who Kevin Steen is. But and the other thing with him is him in action. Um, the other thing with him is, and that was one of the worries I kind of had about the match that we provided. Like, I love his match with Takaki Watanabe. But it's not like a super spotty match. Like it's not like an indie, it's not like a Young Bucks match or a, an AR Fox or Rich Swan sort of kind of crazy like whatever thing. But there were people that watched it and, and appreciated. It was like oh, he's a really great heel, mm-hmm. and they built a good story. And and the the stuff that they did was really great. And man, that they, announcer really told the story too. Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that that was nice too. Um, but people got you know, what we were going for. And they got our style. And and that's what, in the end of the day, that was that was great for us is that we didn't have to have like a big spotty match for people to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. You know, I think people Th- that think that's was... what indie wrestling, I think people think that's what indie wrestling is. Right. And it's so not. And I think we suffer from that when uh, IWC, they sent uh, John, John McChesney and uh, Logan Shulo, who's now, of course, uh, contracted uh, well, in the past year, uh, actually, about oh, just over a year uh, with NXT. Uh, mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, and it was two guys that are good, right? Yeah. But they're not in, in everything going up. Plus, I think it was the second. Yeah, it was the second segment. It was the second show of the day. It was a long mm-hmm. day. Um, and it had been flippy guys, flippy guys, flippy guys, flippy guys, you know, uh, from, right. or energetic or holy crap, this, this, this. And these guys just had a good match. Not mm-hmm. you know, a, a, a good match, you know, but they weren't, you know, flipping into each other. Like, like I, I, John McChesley is a very classic wrestler, I feel, uh, and very, very good. Uh, uh, same with Shulo. Uh, and, and, you know, again, kind of obviously he's there. He's fi- he, he fits that style and look, right? And a lot of these guys don't, you know. Yeah. Um, but hey, look who has WWE contract now out of anybody on National Pro Wrestling Day, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Um, I was in the Ring of Honor, guys, I guess. But um, but uh, it's it's cool to see, and then yeah, that's a, that's a great thing about this particular event was that there was a lot of different style stuff. Uh, uh, the stuff Inspire provided was much different than uh, AAW, which I really enjoyed. Uh, Eddie mm-hmm. Kingston versus Keith Walker because it was just two big dudes just freaking wailing on each other. It was amazing. Um, you know, as opposed to what Hood Slam provided, uh, which was a much more underground feel sort of kind of style, like very different style. It was a was potpourri good. of wrestling. Yeah, and that's always fun to see. Uh, and I got to see people that I really love, or, or that I that I only vaguely heard of, even that that I got to see actually do some amazing stuff. Uh, Speedball Speedball Mike Bailey is freaking amazing. Uh, his match with Kevin Steen from uh, C4 in Canada was crazy mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and and really phenomenal stuff uh we were in a hangout because we were also watching raw simultaneously and i just love listening to bobby uh from the mayhem show like just adore this uh athena mia yim match from uh, aiw like you guys are like watching and discussing something that happens on raw and i just hear bobby getting so excited every time something happens in the match like like that's fun to me um uh, I was glad that you know people got to see stuff that was an alternative, because that's the whole point. Is that this is alternative to what you see on Raw? It's not negative to what you see on Raw. Go support WWE. They they produce some some good stuff nine times out of ten. Um, but if you're fed up and you want something different, don't just stop watching wrestling. Like like that's the purpose of it. It's not like there's not options, and I think that's a really good point of this movement. And, and I know you had a quote in earlier in the chat room uh, when we we're talking about on Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, that that they really drove that home, and, and it is it, it is it is um, these guys are I want to say underground. You know, these guys are just looking for new fans, looking for new new exposure. And I thought mm-hmm. it was a great opportunity. You know, I would love. I mean, just one person, one thing to to do something like an NWA does or something, but to that has some sort of national spot. Like we're featuring New Japan Pro Wrestling on ASX. Right. Even if it's an L Ray, even if it's up on the third tier of cable, 
but I'd love there to be just somebody that maybe, uh, uh, you know, can feature indie wrestling. Can be like, here's here's a, hey, check these guys out here, and they sell DVDs over here, or digital downloads or whatever, but they put it on, like, it's almost like a service, like, like, like a... Uh, you know, just the best of the indies every week. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it's not like it's not out there. And yes, it's going to be varying quality. And I guess it's going to be the hardest sell um, because nothing, nothing's production quality. Right. Nothing. Nobody's selling enough to do that. A Ring of mm-hmm. Honor, Ring of Honor is not doing much better in indie production. Yeah. Not I, much. I, they got better cameras than any of us. But mm, that's mm-hmm. that. Uh, that's about it. Money, money would definitely be the issue. I, but I think going back to back to it. Um, the the one thing that would you know be possible and, and and the thing that I think is constantly being shattered uh, in the world of wrestling is community and and the ability to work together. Uh, one of the best things Beyond posted was the fact that the best thing about this whole thing was that there was no BS, there was no shitting on each other, there was just people working together and then mm-hmm. for for something greater and and that's more important than anything like like that kind of community is something that is unique to any other business, I think. I don't think you see that in much other businesses. No, no, definitely not. It's a little bit in the startup communities. Um, I've noticed being around it in Pittsburgh, uh, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, you know, the two hot so, dog stands or whatever. Yeah, 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 together. yeah, exactly, exactly. But um, but but a lot of these, um, they don't play in each other's playground or their, their territories, you know, like, like yeah. AIW is not competition to you as in you're in San Antonio and they're in Cleveland. Uh, yeah. But now they kind of all are competition because they're all online. They're all on smart mark, you know, uh, mm-hmm. but some of our stuff's on, on smart mark with IWC, you know, for instance. So, so why not? Um, I can, I, if I could segue that into something else regarding uh, camaraderie, uh, this, sure. came, this came around my, uh, my alerts. Um, to put it over somebody in, in my neck of the woods. Um, so there's a, a promotion we don't talk about much because they don't have much for DVDs or anything. And I like to talk about somebody like this role alternative that you guys can experience out there no matter where you are. So there's a group called Five Star Wrestling. I think I'm getting this right. Uh, they work mostly, I think, north of town, sometimes down towards West Virginia, uh, here in the Pittsburgh area. And somebody stole their wrestling ring. Mm. All right, wrap your okay. Those that work in the indies, I, I think we do have uh, quite a few people that do work within the indies, uh, or or close enough that they kind of get that idea. They've seen maybe been around long enough to start seeing that ring getting torn down. And this metal, heavy, holy crap, metal. Um, you didn't have insurance on the ring. It's valued at about five thousand dollars. Guys, yeah, insurance. I, I get that. You know, I'm I'm looking at insurance for my equipment going to these wrestling shows, especially for. You have to have it because, I mean, it's not like getting paid enough for, for fixing that thing. Yeah. Might, might have had an incident with that uh, early in, to, in last year with somebody. I'm not getting that. <laughs> and uh, you all know who you are. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> it turns out um, um, somebody stepped up to the plate and uh, let them have their ring or, or rented it or, or whatever the case might have been. And that was Justin Plummer, our friend of the show, now owner of the International Wrestling Cartel. Nice. <laughs> and, how did, the show. and how did I find, I find out about this? An article in the Tribune Review here in Pittsburgh. Nice. So, uh, you know, I kind of jokingly uh, kind of hit up Plummer. I was like, hey, where'd it go? Uh, stealing, stealing somebody else's ring to get some, some print before <laughs> your first wrestling show this weekend. Uh, yeah. other than that, but no, it's a but tre- tremendous, tremendous to see this, mm-hmm. especially in this area. And I know you've experienced this. We've talked about this off air, about the, the biting heads of promoters and, and promotions and, and wrestlers uh, in our, our respective uh, t- uh, uh, regions, right? Mm-hmm. Um it's been a problem for years, you know. There's whole message boards about it. It's probably a problem. Um, and the thing is, it's probably, I mean, it's a testament to what, you know, it's, just, it's a problem everywhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it yeah. doesn't, you know, just it span is. one area. And again, too. like, even like what, what Zima said last week about, like, just people having these attitudes that just don't fit what you're doing on this level. Right. right. But to right. see that, you know, um, and it is, and it's even mentioned here, Plumber says, like, well, a lot of our guys actually work the shows with him. Like, a lot of, a lot of the trainees with IWC, uh, are on these shows, mm-hmm. so it kind of makes sense, right? Uh, to ha- to help them out. So, 
Um, but great to see that. Great to see already, you know, there's kind of the, he's kind of moving in the right direction of supporting the, 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 the industry, you know. And it's not like he's, he's working in his backyard uh, down in Elizabeth, you know, or, right. or White Oak or, or even the spot shows they do up at Clearfield or Meadville, right? Um, but uh, uh, just great to see. I, I think, is it Butler or something like that they are working, something like that? Uh, East Brady. I don't know the. I don't know what that area is. Ferry Street. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not familiar with the region, um, but I, I'm pretty sure it's north of town. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but uh, but good to see. Good to see with that stuff. So, hey, I have a feeling there's some indie wrestling going on this weekend. There may be. There may just be sort. Uh, uh, we we I, I pinpointed a couple that you want to talk about. Uh, uh, there is some cool uh, women's wrestling stuff happening this weekend. Yeah, I've been getting uh, press releases on this one. Yeah, the first is for um, uh, Valkyrie Women's Wrestling, uh, which is a group that uh, has been coming up as far as um, uh, women's wrestling is concerned. I've been hearing stuff about them um, every once in a while, just sort of, you know, the, the name will come up and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But they're ones that are kind of making waves um, uh, mm-hmm. as far as the, something that is very unique to independent wrestling, which is four women wrestling shows, which you don't get on the mainstream. Uh, which is cool to see, and and because there's a lot of talented female wrestlers out there that deserve a, a a platform in which to showcase what they can do, and Valkyrie is one of them, and they have an event uh, coming up this weekend. If I can pull up the date on it, I believe it's Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, there, there's a lot of talented people on that show. One of them is actually a guest. Uh, uh, the Indie Mayhem show, Miss Dyslexia, is making her debut for them, nice. uh, which is big for her. Uh, she, she's uh, you know recently moved up to uh, that area and you know starting to gain some more um, <clears throat> more traction and some more bookings and stuff like that. So if you're going to that event, definitely support her uh, and and her work uh, in that promotion. And according to the trailer, uh, so I think that, it is Friday, January twenty third. Yeah, Friday. Excuse me, at uh, the Woodbury Heights Community Center in Woodbury Heights, New Jersey. So. Um, New Jersey, you know, great area uh, for wrestling in general. Um, so I think we're having a little bit so, of issue with you there, buddy. Hey, I'm back. I'm hey, Google Chrome. All hey, right. Google Chrome. You're, you're fun right now. Um, <laughs> hey, let me, uh, let me uh, plug a couple things and maybe we'll let your internet sort out there for a minute, okay? Uh, okay. So, uh, first of all, of course, uh, big time uh, uh, coming up this weekend for uh, us at Sorgatron Media. Uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, first show under Justin Plummer, it's going to be IWC's Reloaded, uh, featuring, of course, Tommy Dreamer coming back to take on his old rival and friend, Colin Delaney, from his WWE days. Um, a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, there's a really interesting concept. I'm, I'm curious and probably going to be instrumental in this turning out right, uh, but uh, <laughs> they're going to have randomly generated uh, matches. Mm-hmm. We don't know who's going to defend. He's going. Uh, Dalton Castle's going to defend the title against. We don't know who uh, who's, who else is going to be in the four way for the, the uh, Super Indie title. Uh, who, anybody that's going to be in the, the vacant tag title match, for instance. Um, plus, you know, other matches that are already booked. You know, with a lot of their talent. Got friends of the show like Keith Hodd, Asylum. We talked about a couple weeks ago. Uh, Asylum actually taking on uh, three other guys, including friend of the show Chess Flex, who are in the in a handicap match. So. That'll be interesting. Um, uh, it'll be fun. It'll be it's uh, back at the Court Time Sports Center. Uh, we always have fun with that, and uh, I know it pushes me to the limits in production. Uh, we'll try <laughs> to do that one. Oh boy, the list I got, man, man. <laughs> but it's great. I love doing it. I love working with these guys, and it's a challenge, and, um, and it makes us better, you know. And, and you know, maybe with Sogatron Media, the DVDs, and and what they're doing, and, and I'm hoping it gets more people interested in what they're doing. Uh, also, big announcement. Speaking of them, uh, coming up uh, in April, they have the big night of superstars coming up uh, in mm-hmm. Evil PA. Ric Flair already announced for show, but jeez, uh, announced last night during Monday Night Raw during Raw reunion. Kevin Nash. As Ric Flair was getting punched by Big Show. <laughs> Kevin Nash. Now I'm going to be busy, so if anybody's going to be in Meadville and wants to be my agent um, to do <laughs> this, uh, I have a copy of Ninja Turtles 2 on VHS that already has Vanilla Ice signed on it. Um, and I missed my chance for Kevin Nash several years ago uh, when he was at I was at that event with yeah, you. Yeah, I, I can't believe I didn't think about it then. It would probably <laughs> have been a lot easier than it would have been here. Um, I'm going to be busy doing the show and setup, so if you might be going, 
I'll get a couple bucks to uh, get a some Kevin Nash autograph on that tape. I'd really appreciate that. <laughs> Anyways, other than that, that should be a lot of fun. Also, I saw on the big uh, list O matches, uh, there's a show coming up for eh, where they put your document at, buddy. Um, Black Diamond Wrestling. We talked about them in the past. They're doing a lot of stuff, putting a lot of matches on YouTube. Last I knew, they were streaming a lot of stuff. Uh, so, so, uh, and, and really upping kind of the production of what they're doing. Um, I really looked past these guys for a good long time, uh, just because, again, not shareable, right? Uh, right. To, to most of you guys on these podcasts. But seeing what they're doing, it's tremendous. I know Trevor... Uh, Trevor from uh, 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 wrestling for uh, wrestling for breakfast dot com. I'm sorry if I'm slipping that on, on top of my head. I know he's in the chat room, so I hope he doesn't hear me screwing this up. Um, I, th- I think he's been involved with them. I know he was handing out flyers down there when they were working the uh, Ring of Honor show uh, because they were having a show the next night right across the street. Genius. Um, <laughs> and a lot of friends of the show involved with this, uh, you know, including John McChesney, Facade, uh, Chris LaRusso, Serafini. I mean, again, a lot of love from our faces we see from IWC in the area popping up here. Dan Sandwich! I know LB. Dan Sandwich! Oh, that commentary with Dan Sandwich in church was tremendous. Um, so that's all I got. I think your internet's straightened out, so what do you what do you got? Uh, uh, the last thing I do want to mention is, uh, uh, going into the women's wrestling thing, was uh, also Shine Wrestling has an event this weekend nice. uh, on Friday the 23rd that's also on iPay-Per-View at www.nlive.com. I mention it because uh, among the female competitors that will be competing on that show will be the Shine Wrestling debut of someone who uh, I've had the pleasure of working with at Inspire Pro Wrestling, uh, Jessica James who is awesome and talented and is definitely deserving of this opportunity. So if there's one reason to uh, watch that event, it would be to support Jessica because she deserves it. So definitely uh, go support her. And I said uh, that's in Ybor City Friday uh, this weekend. And you can also check it out on www.nlive.com. Uh, and then just one quick thing I do want to bring up, uh, just sort of an end thing because it was sort of um, – uh, he sort of mentioned it uh, uh, a couple hours ago um, – the second ever guest that we've had on the Indie Mayhem show, uh, Kelly Kyle, uh, who was a photographer from around the area um, in the Texas wrestling scene, uh, recently uh, announced that he'll be stepping away uh, to pursue some other stuff. And I kind of just wanted to uh, bring up and mention him because uh, he's been an awesome friend uh, in the independent wrestling world to me. And he's a guy who, like me and Swore, you know, was a fan that went to shows and eventually got involved and, and, you know, worked uh, tirelessly on, you know, his work and his craft, and, and he, you know, produced some amazing photo stuff. He did he did our Inspire Pro programs, which were amazing, and and his quality of work and, and his his love for professional wrestling really came through in every show that he worked on. Um, and I just wanted to thank him for his friendship and uh, for getting the opportunity to work with him uh, a few times at Inspire Pro Wrestling. Um, being around him in that setting. It's just a really cool feeling. So uh, thank you, Kelly Kyle, for all that you've done. And I, this will not be the end. I will eventually uh, be in your apartment to play backyard wrestling too, like the, like the good old days. Um, but I uh, uh, just wanted to mention that and say thank you to uh, Kelly Kyle. Backyard wrestling too, huh? Backyard wrestling too. Very love, underrated video game. I love that one. I did still sitting right over there. <laughs> uh, both of those um awesome awesome well guys uh that's uh, all the indie fit to talk about on a podcast uh that is moderately listened to uh so uh thank you amen at amen Two, please i'm at sawyertron you can of course join us here every uh tuesday about 11 p.m eastern i think we should just make the window 11 to 11 30 is going to be the start uh, yeah, officially <laughs> um check us out at mayhem show on the twitters all the other places uh thanks to our friends slice on broadway.com pittsburgh wrestling.com media.com for everything and support uh pro wrestling.com i'm pro wrestling tease.com slash wms oh hey they sent me uh, i didn't i watched this on the air show they sent me some swag today so thank Swagger. you thank you pro wrestling tease um I, uh, they're hooking up the people that have stores on there so great you can see the quality and everything on our hd video if you're watching this on youtube uh so go check that out um but pro wrestlingtees.com slash wms support us buy a shirt and pick up plenty of our friends of the show are on there um and uh just support wrestling you know and whatever you call it just support wrestling um and thank you very much so until next time keep supporting
Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>